Swiss Valley civilization laid foundation to Indian culture as well as Indian society. Its phenomenal and glorious past and still unresolved mysteries enthrall the modern society. It is one of the most widely researched of all ancient civilizations and its greatness still instills a feeling of pride in every Indian's heart. So I guess you all have understood today's topic, the Indus Valley Civilization. So let's get started. But before that, whoa, 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 I totally forgot to say, hey everyone, this is Radhya, Radhya Ramakrishna. And I'm here with another brand new topic once again, the Indus Valley Civilization. So let's just dive straight into it. Um, so yeah, I think you all have forgot who I am. Because it's been like so many years since I've uploaded another video. But anyways, let's just get started. So today's topic is the Indus Valley Civilization. In today's video, we are going to learn. Our learning outcomes include the discovery and location of the Indus Valley Civilization, main features of the Indus Valley Civilization, including town planning, architecture, political uh, and social structure, occupation, trade and commerce, religion and culture, and finally its decline. So we're not going to talk about the decline just yet because that is just so sad. Anyways. I'm um, starting with the discovery look and location of the Indus Valley Civilization. So this will just be a brief intro, intro. So anyways, the Indus Valley Civilization was a Bronze Age civilization that emerged in the Indian subcontinent along the banks of River Indus and its tributaries. It was discovered by chance when in 1826, a British explorer um, Charles Masson in India found some mysterious brick mounds in Punjab. He thought they looked like old castles. And then in 1856, um, railway engineers while laying railway tracks found more such bricks. They did not realize its significance and just carted off the bricks uh, to build the railway line between Karachi and Lahore in Pakistan. Many years later, in um, some mix around the 19s, many years later, um, Daya Ram Sahini understood the importance of these, this, these sites and excavated the ancient ruins of Harappa on the banks of River Ravi in western Punjab. And meanwhile, in 1922, um, Rakaldas Benerjee excavated the sites of yet another city of the Indus Valley Civilization that is Mohenjadaro and so yeah basically this was our first step to finding out the Indus Valley Civilization and uh, many years later in 1931 large scale excavations were carried out at Mohenjadaro under the supervision of John Ma Marshall and basically the Indus Valley Civilization all these sites that they discovered were part of the Indus Valley Civilization that emerged in the Bronze Age which flourished from about 3300 BCE to 1300 BCE. So the Indus Valley Civilization is also called the Harappan Civilization because Harappa was one of the first sites, it was the, basically the first site of the Indus Valley to be discovered. So yeah, and the Indus Valley Civilization also has many important sites. Um, it basically extends from Rajasthan to Sindh to Gujarat to Western Uttar, uh, to Western Uttar Pradesh and yeah. Some of the important sites of the Indus Valley Civilization include um, include um, Ropar, Ropar um, Mohenjadaro, um, Harappa and many others as well. So basically, our Indus Valley Civilization is the civilization of ancient India, but ancient India was thought to have begun around 1500 years ago with the advent of the Aryans. But the discovery of the Indus Valley proved that our India had begun like 2000 years before the Aryans. So yeah, heads off to the Indus Valley Civilization. Moving on, let's move on to the main features of the Indus Valley Civilization. That just includes all of these. So yeah. Um, the Indus Valley Civilization people were highly, highly civilized and industrious. They have certain characteristics that sets the Indus Valley Civilization apart from all the other civilizations, including town planning, architecture, political structure and occupation, starting with town planning. The Indus Valley cities were impeccably planned. Their town planning was highly advanced and basically the town was divided into two parts, the citadel and the lower town. The citadel was located on higher ground above the rest of the city um, basically on higher ground and the lower town was basically lower and the lower town was occupied by common people while historians believe that the citadel was occupied by the ruling area of uh, ruling area of the city ruling people of the city um, um, a large brick wall a large burnt brick wall separated the citadel from the lower town so basically yeah and many of the public structures as well were located inside the citadel. We will get to that in a bit. Moving on, we have architecture and we got different kinds of categories in architecture. So basically, the Indus Valley people were highly advanced with architecture as well. 
their um, the houses they built, the public structures, their ingenious drainage systems um, reflected the highly advanced architectural skills. So basically, let's just get started. Um, we're not done with architecture yet. Let's uh, talk about the homes that they built, their houses. So basically, um, the houses of the Indus Valley civilization that are located in the lower town um, basically are one or two story structures um, with a courtyard at the center surrounded by rooms. Some houses were even actually had their own wells. Um, yeah, how brilliant would that be to have an old well at your house? <laughs> Anyways, um, these houses were built with sun dried bricks or unbaked bricks. And stones, and each house also had their own drains to let out the waste, uh, waste and used water, which joined a network of bigger and covered drains. And we could just go on and on about the drainage system as well. So, coming to public structures, um, many of the important public structures of the civilization were located inside the citadel of the town. Um, for example, the Great Granary of Harappa. Um, or the Great Bath or the Assembly Hall at Mohenjo-daro. These were all structures located inside the citadel of their particular city. So yeah, the Great Granary of Harappa is a massive structure of 12 granaries um, arranged in two rows, um, sorry, four rows. So yeah, basically. Um, they used this Great Granary to store surplus food produce and their food produce and their grains basically. And they located this near the river so that um, they could have easy transport of um, uh, food from one place to another. And moving on, the Great Bath at Mohenjo-daro was also an important structure of the Indus Valley Civilization. This was a large structure, um, a large rectangular structure that had six different entrances le uh, that le led to the central bathing pool. Flights of stairs also led to the bottom of the pool. And um, these, um, the Great Bath was filled with water on special occasions when important people of the city came to take a dip. Wow, I wish I could have been there. Seriously. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so this Great Bath is believed to have been used for religious rituals and ceremonies. Moving on, the Assembly Hall, which is also located in Mohenjo-daro, um, is, um, is a basically a hall of 20 pillars um, arranged in four um, four four rows and uh, yeah basically this assembly hall was probably used by collective prayers of the people so moving on let's talk about the drainage systems now I know I chose to talk, talk about drainage systems because just don't even get started about it they are just so ingenious anyways the drainage systems um, in the Indus Valley civilization were absolutely impeccably planned and they had ingenious drainage systems these drainage systems each house had a drain a drainage system like each house had a drains connected to a series of drains running along the main street and um, drains in the main streets had manholes which were intercepted and cleaned at regular intervals and all these proved that the Indus Valley people play, paid great attention to cleanliness and sanitization so mind you people wash your hands if yeah basically um, it's just hygiene. <laughs> Moving on, political structure. Um, first of all, the Indus Valley people's political structure is basically, we can talk about that as well. Um, seeing their architecture and brilliant town planning skills, the Indus Valley people have a highly efficient political, um, political structure administrative systems, which exercised good control and supervision as well. So basically, um, also the terracotta figure of the bearded man found in the Indus Valley civilization is believed to be the priest king of the civilization. Uh, priest king of Mohenjo-daro uh, and it is also believed that Mohenjo-daro and Harappa might have been the administrative ruling capitals of the city and moving on um, let's learn about their food as well well basically um, their food they mainly ate wheat and barley but the diet also included products such as fish meat milk um, and various kinds of other fruits and vegetables and coming to their clothing their clothing is our second topic here um, they basically the indus valley people wore cloths made out of wool or cotton and men wore a cloth covering their low bodies like dhotis and women wore skirts and shawls covered their upper bodies jewelry like um, ornaments necklaces finger rings were worn by both men and women and these were made out of gold copper or ivory for the rich and um, by shells bone or copper for the poor so yeah basically wow they even wore jewelry made out of bones wow 
anyways <laughs> uh, moving on to entertainment so they basically needed their own entertainment too remains of chess pieces and artifacts of in of board games suggest the indus valley peoples lacking for indo games and also various toys were also found in um, different poses various statues of um various statues terracotta figures of women and other uh, people were um also discovered in different poses which uh, also indicates that this, the indus valley people spent their free time in singing and dancing and um that must be enjoyable probably for them um moving on they also built toys they basically built toys out of baked clay or terracotta which is something they used to build toys some of the toys that they built also had movable parts actually um for example the wheels of carts or the heads of animals which displayed their highly advanced engineering skills so moving on talking about art and craft which comes in the category of occupation um which is the third um third category in occupation anyways let's just move on to occupation so people there needed to basically work for a living and the indus valley peoples all this that i've told so far displays that the indus valley people were highly um, industrious in nature and they were skillful at many activities such as fishing hunting spinning weaving pottery um art and craft many other things However agriculture was primarily the core occupation because of the fertile soil deposits silt deposits that they have there and they grew many kinds of crops such as wheat millet barley um peas sesame um lentils and many others as well also various kinds of fruits and vegetables and some remains also display that they were one of the first to cultivate cotton so yeah hats of indus valley hands of indus valley civilization <laughs> also because it's indian civilization and yeah moving on domestication of animals when it comes to animal husbandry um the indus valley people domesticated many kinds of animals such as cats dogs buffaloes and maybe even camels also um sheep cattle many others as well camels and donkeys were used for transportation of goods while um camels and donkeys were used for transportation of goods and basically um the toys found there um the carts toy carts found there display what kind of animals that the indus valley people domesticated and also the kind of transport that the indus valley people used so basically moving on <coughs> art and craft so yeah moving on to art and craft archaeologists have uh, archaeologists have also found um many workshops of people who did art and craft like goldsmiths and coppersmiths um basically they created uh, goldsmiths created jewelry of gold and silver coppersmiths created utensils for daily use bronze smiths created weapons and handy tools like weapons so yeah basically they also created many toys out of terracotta and baked clay one such iconic um doll i one such iconic idol is the dancing girl from mohenjodaro and idols of goddesses were also found um moving on uh, the indus valley people when it comes to art and craft were also very skillful at pottery um they used to create pots of different sh uh, shapes and sizes and these had different designs on them so uh, they had good art and craft skills <laughs> um moving on to trade and commerce they definitely shared their talent with the rest of the world in the form of trade and commerce um so when it comes to trade the indus valley people traded extensively within and um with other civilizations as well for example seals of the indus valley civilization were found at mesopotamian sites and which um basically um proves that there was long distance trade between both of these civilizations and similarly mesopotamian seals have also been found at indus valley sites so i think it's safe to say that these two had um trade relations established between them um also when it comes to trade the um the items among the items of trade were silver copper um silver copper and many others um in return for their stuff as well like silver copper a piece le jewelry um turquoise etc so basically um yeah basically so the seals found at the indus valley sites were of the mesopotamian um site basically proved that there was a long distance trade between them the indus valley seals um also contain many pictures of animals such as one horned unicorns wow they knew unicorns back then too 
I like unicorns. Um, one horn unicorns, buffaloes, um, um, crocodiles, tigers, and many other animals as well. So um, they were highly skilled at art and craft and trade and commerce. So basically, moving on, the Indus Valley script, when we talk about the Indus Valley script, um, there, the Harappan script was um, discovered, but it's still not deciphered yet. Basically, the script is a pictographic script, which means it involves pictures and each picture represents some sort of idea or an object. Um, so yeah, basically, and more than 400 um, symbols have been found, but none of them have been deciphered yet. So um, I'd be really excited for the day when they are deciphered. <laughs> Hopefully that's somewhere soon. <laughs> um, moving on, when we move on to religion and culture, um, basically, none of um, none of the buildings there were actually considered as religious buildings, and um, even if religious buildings did exist, it's hard to identify them because of absence of icons. Um, however, idols of goddesses have been found at more than one site, so um, these might have been worshipped by the Harappans. Um, also, the Indus Valley people um, believed in life after death, so basically they uh, buried their dead along with utensils and their daily used objects. Um, they also cremated their death. After the cremation, their ash, ash was stored in a urn and kept with their utensils and daily used objects. Um, so yeah, so let's learn how this civilization came to decline finally. Wow! like. Like, I have no idea how it came to decline because the Indus Valley civilization was so spectacular, but then it saw a sudden decline. And yeah, basically, it saw a, cert a sudden decline and many um, people believe in different reasons for the decline as well. Um, some of the people believe that the river Indus changed its course suddenly, causing floods at some place, droughts at other places, and yeah, basically. But others also believe that deforestation might have also been the cause, because everybody knows that de deforestation is not a thing that is good. Um, so yeah, they also think that deforestation could be the cause. And um, some also think that the invasion of foreign tribes like the Aryans might also have um, played a role in the decline. Um, so yeah, basically, whatever may be the factor though, it must have led to an environmental disaster which caused the crops to fail, people starved and diseases spread. And wow, that is just so sad. <laughs> Anyways, um, so this Indus Valley civilization, um, we have learned everything about the Indus Valley civilization right now. So moving on, actually, I don't think we have anything left to move on with. Um, I think we've done everything um, on today's to-do list. I don't think we have anything to move on with. Anyways, um, that's it for today, people. Until next time, I'm Aradhya. I'll see you in the next video. Stay tuned for more videos by subscribing my channel. Bye.